Okay, today we're going to talk about bitterness. It's almost a, a video update of the one I just did recently, but bitterness. Okay, Let's go to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. A bitter taste, or rather a quality in things which excites a bit biting, disagreeable sensation in the tongue. Okay. Number one, in a figurative sense, extreme enmity, grudge, hatred, or rather an excessive degree or imbalance, impli not balance, implicableness of passion and emotion as the bitterness of anger, Ephesians 4, 31, which we'll get to. Sharpness, severity of temper. Okay. Keenness of reproach, okay. biting sarcasm. I mean, do we see that often online, biting sarcasm? Four, keen sorrow, painful affliction, vexation, deep distress of mind. Okay. An example was Hannah was in bitterness of soul, 1 Samuel 1, 10. In the gall of bitterness in a state of extreme impiety or enmity to God. Okay. Acts 8.23 and we'll get there. Root of bitterness, a dangerous error, a schizism tending to draw persons to apostasy, Hebrew 12.15. We'll get to that one too, but I like the Webster's 18.20 dictionary because it uses examples in the Bible. But I came across the word gall. How many times do we actually look words up? So I, went, I came across gall, impiety, enmity and apostasy those four words hit me and I'm like I've been told what they mean but how about we look up what they mean so it says in the gall of bitterness what does gall mean in the animal economy the bile a bitter a yellowish green fluid secreted in the glander substance of the liver it is gluttonous or imp imperfectly fluid like oil so most people think of gall like a gallbladder. Okay, you have a gallbladder, right? But two, anything extremely bitter, extremely bitter. So when it says in the gall of bitterness, it's not just bitter, but it's extremely bitter. Three, rancor, malignity. Okay, definition four, anger, bitterness of mind, in the anger of bitterness. Okay. Does bitterness lead to anger? We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. So gall, and when it says in the gall of bitterness, okay, uh, anger, it's extre you're extremely bitter and they have anger. Mm -hmm. Extreme impiety. Impiety means definition number one, ungodliness, ever irreverence towards the supreme being. Okay. Two, any act of wickedness is blasphemy and scoffing at the supreme being. So in piety, uh, you don't have reverence for God. Can bitterness lead to the point where you don't have reverence for God? True reverence for God? Okay. Notice it says, in the gall of bitterness, in a state of extreme impiety or enmity to God. Enmity, what's that? Definition number one, the quality of being an enemy, the opposition or friendship, ill will, hatred, unfriendly dispositions. Um, have we seen bitterness in people that they, sh they this reflects in their life, how they talk, how they treat people? Let's see. An example is I will put enmity between thee and the, the woman, Genesis 3.15. The carnal mind is enmity against God, Romans 8, 7. Good examples. Number two, a state of opposition. The friendship of the world is enmity with God, James 4, 4. So, bitterness, could it cause opposition? Could it get you to oppose God? Turn your back, which we're, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. The other one is the root of bitterness. The root of bitterness is a dangerous error of schizism tending to draw persons to apostasy. What's apostasy? Definition number one, an abandonment of what one has professed. Have we seen that a lot lately? A total desertion, a departure from one's faith or religion. Definition number two, the desertion from a party to which one has adhered. 
Definition number three, among physicians, the throwing off of exfoliated or fractured bone or the various solution of disease. Number four, an abscess. So one and two are the main ones for apostasy that we'll be focusing on. An abandonment of what one professed, the desertion from party to which one would adhere to. If they were of us, they would remain with us. But they went out from us because they weren't of us. No, I'm paraphrasing that. So, so apostasy is people that were fake, never saved to begin with, and apostasy is people that have fallen away. Both of those. Okay. So, just throwing some definitions down, look at the Webster's 18 dic 1828 Dictionary of all those definitions. I go to one definition, say bitterness, and then I find big words that you've been told. I get into discussions with people saying this is what the word means, and I show them the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I show them the verse it says as an example of that word being used, and they're just going off of what people told them. Or they're just going off of what they want the word to mean. And I've told people that one of my main goals in the ministry that God has allowed me to be a part of is that words have meaning. That's why every word in here is in there for a reason. This book, the King James Bible, I'm a King James Bible believer, is God's perfect written word. Every word in here has meaning. Sometimes multiple meanings. Right? So that's why I'm always trying to go hardcore on definitions. People say uh, that I go to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, I don't go to the Bible. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary is based off the definitions in the Bible and references the, defini uh, the Bible verses to back up the definitions, as I've read for you. But the first place we're going to go to is Acts 8. If you want to turn to Acts 8 real quick. Bitterness. Oh gosh, is bitterness a serious thing? Is it something we should take seriously, or is it just something that's like, yeah, you, you should, you know, it's a, something you can take a light attitude towards? Or is it something that's very, very serious? Acts 8 13. If you go to verse 13. Then, if you know this story about Simon the sorcerer, then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracle and signs which were done. This part, he's, he believes. Uh, before that, uh, Philip preached the gospel. Not just him, but other people believed, and they were baptized. But this is also a great verse to prove to these people that you have to be baptized to be saved. If you were never baptized, you're lost and on your way to hell. You have to be baptized. Baptism is part of uh, leading to salvation. This is a great one to disprove that. Verse 14. And now when the apostles were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Verse 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So when they were baptized by Philip, they didn't receive the Holy Ghost. They had the knowledge, they believed in their heart, but they didn't receive the Holy Ghost until Apostle uh, Peter and John came down and prayed for them. The, the, was it Peter and John didn't re-baptize them, saying, okay, we're going to re-baptize you again with the real baptism so you can receive the Holy Ghost. No, they just laid their hands on them and prayed for them. And I've gotten into discussions with people like this, oh, you have to be baptized. And then when I bring this verse up to them, they're like, well, that was just a gift that the, the apostles could do. Only the apostles could let you get the Holy Spirit without being baptized. Gosh, people are just so desperate to believe what they want to believe, especially with definitions of words, instead of just trusting the Bible. But that's going off on a tangent. Verse 15, who... Okay, we did that one. Verse 16, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, talking about the Holy Spirit, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17, then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hand the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Okay. If you read back a little ways about Simon, 
He had control over the people. He he bewitched the people with his sorcery. The pe it could have been fame. Everybody came to him. It's money, you know. He had lots of money. Um, and when Peter or Philip came around preaching this, and then he saw the people, he lost the attention of the people. And oh, I better go along with the people. And then Peter and John come along, and people are receiving the Holy Ghost. And that bitterness, and we'll get there, but the bitterness starts right in his heart that the people aren't looking at him, and they're not needing him, and he wants to, I believe he wants to have that fame again and be the center of attention, as it were. So what does he do? Saying, let's see, and Simon saw that, the number 18, saw that through the laying apostle hand was given, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power that on whom I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. It always comes back to the heart. Okay? I have to throw that in there. Always, always comes back to the heart. 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Okay. Perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. Okay, I had to look up... Um, We looked up gall. Let me look back for a second. Remember, it's anything extremely bitter. Anger, but this time bitter. So, Simon's bitterness turned to a reverence towards the supreme being. Remember in piety. He was not showing reverence for an almighty God. Oh God, I want to be like you in the sense that I want to be equal with you. Okay, God's the one that gives people the Holy Spirit. Okay, Paul and John prayed that they would receive the Holy Ghost, but God's the one that gave it to them. Simon was trying to be equal with God. He didn't have reverence for God. He wanted to be the man that people looked to, as I said before, and make a lot of money and doing this a state of opposition. Um, the Bible also talks about them, how people will make merchandise of you and merchandise of the Lord. Um, he became an enemy of God when he made that statement. Opposition, he was opposing God. How many people today have no reverence for God? Okay. They have no reverence for Jesus Christ, who is God. You know, God the Father. How many people do... Do you know out there that have bitterness in their heart and that bitterness has affect their walk with the Lord? I have. There's times in my life that I've gotten a little bit bitter and that bitterness got in the way of my walk with the Lord. And if you have bitterness, it's going to get in your walk, in the way of your walk with the Lord. Okay? You can't have that bitterness inside you. Now, as I asked before, is bitterness important? Bitterness is not something to take lightly. Bitterness is a serious thing. It starts out as a little root. I was out back today <laughs> mowing my lawn, weed eating, and I realized I'd let the re weeds get pretty bad in there. So once you let one little weed go, the next thing you know, you got more weeds. If you try to pull a weed up, and you don't get the entire root, you leave so much as just a little spot of it, that weed comes back in a heartbeat, okay? And we'll talk about examples of that later. We see here that bitterness will affect your walk with the Lord. You will stop having reverence for God, towards God, and you will oftentimes oppose Him. You will fight God and forget your place. You'll forget your place, in other words, okay? You start to put yourself on the same level as God, okay? That bitterness, um, I've seen it online, YouTube, I've seen it in people's ministries, their so-called ministries, and I've seen it in actual Bible-believing 
Christians Ministries, where that minister gets in there and it starts affecting the ministry that they're part of. They, it shows that it's affecting them being used by God in His ministry. So we learn here that bitterness can stop you from was it having reverence towards God, treating God how you're supposed to with true reverence, and bitterness can also get you to oppose God. You once start, stood for something, now you hate the person that's preaching truth, so now you're going to turn against that truth. You're going to be in opposition to God because of that bitterness. Sometimes I think people aren't turning from truth just because, hey, I was wrong, this is a lie. The Trinity, I was wrong, I turned from it, I didn't have bitterness in my heart. I turned from using the term Trinity, God in three persons, God the Father, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit. I turned from that and I repented. But I think some people are turning from things like the true gospel, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, not necessarily because in their heart they, they, they're like, I don't want to, I think that's wrong. They came across somebody they put on a pedestal, and I'm getting ahead of myself. They put on a pedestal, and when they heard him, that bitterness towards that man got them to turn from truth. They became an opposition to God. All right. Turn to Romans chapter 3. Next time, next part, we're going to talk about when it talks about bitterness. We're going to start in verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They've all gone out of the way, they've together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now I stop there for a second before we get to the word bitterness. This right here is the number one reason you don't put a man on a pedestal. Okay, you don't hold a man in such high, high regard like he's a famous person or a movie star or a model or something like that. Okay, I'm not perfect. God's perfect written word is. God's word is perfect, but I'm not perfect. Uh, other brothers and sisters in Christ out there are not perfect. Right. When I fail you, and there'll be times that I will, that is when your world is going to come crashing down. And I say that in a sense that if you hold me up on a pedestal, oh, you're such a great man of God. And I know I'm new. I'm just starting out. I'm not patting myself on the back. But there's men out there where people have put them on such a high pedestal that the moment they're off in an area or the moment they, they say something or correct you when you really want to believe in something, they correct you and say you're wrong, that bitterness starts building up. You are not to hold anybody on a pedestal. Okay. When people say I hold Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries on a pedestal, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. You put Jesus Christ on a pedestal. He's the only one that's not going to let you down. He might tell you what you don't want to hear, but he'll never let you down. Put his word, this right here, the King James Bible, should always come before any man come before any woman too. But I might as well throw that out there. Okay. Let's continue with verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Talking about your voice. With their tongues they use deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Verse 14. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Get a hold of that, those three verses there. It uses bitterness. So, bitterness that's in the heart, because we talked about earlier, it always, always, is always going to come down to the heart. It always is. It's not about the flesh. It's not about your words in the sense of, I can say I'm a Christian, and people just have to believe it. Uh, your heart is where it starts. It's always going to come down to the heart. Now your heart, you people can see your heart by your actions and by your words. That is an example, evidence of your heart. So when you have bitterness in your heart, okay, you're going to start speak. Your words are going to reflect that. 
you're going to start sowing seeds of deceit. Uh, poison of ash is under their lips. You're going to poison people with your words. Whose mouth is full of cursing. People try to say, I'm trying to think back to the story of Paul, not Paul, Peter, when he denies Jesus thrice, he was mad because he wanted to fight. He had his sword and he wanted to fight for Jesus Christ, but Jesus told him not to. Put your sword away. He's the one that pulled his sword, cut the ear off of the priest, and Jesus healed the priest, and he had bitterness in his heart. And he denied Jesus three times, and after the third, on the third time he was denying him, he was cursing. Could, could uh, Peter have had some bitterness in his heart? I think so. Okay. So bitterness can be shown, like the evidence of bitterness can be shown through your, your speech, how you talk. You'll see people speaking neg negatively on purpose. Okay. I've done it. There's times where I sit there and I get so upset at somebody, upset at the world, um, and I'll sit there and for some reason my mind just starts going off and starts thinking negatively. Okay. Um, what we see here about deceit and then poison, you just, you, you just, your, con your countenance just gets to the point of you're just being so negative. And you'll see that around people that have bitterness in their heart. They just, they get negative. Everything's bad, or they always try to look at the bad side on everything. You know, there's going to be a bad thing, side to things, but there's also a good side. If they're mentioning both, then, you know, I, I'm not talking that it's bitterness. But when you see someone who tends to ignore the good side and always talks about the bad, or sometimes just makes it out like there is no good side, it's just bad, you know. Best examples with people, with men. Uh, sun came out. And boy, is it warm. Men, um, they see the bad things they do, the mistakes they make, and they take that mistake, and that's all they run with. They, they, don't, they can't say anything good about them. Okay? They have bitterness towards that person. They, sometimes you can have bitterness towards yourself, where all you do is say bad things about yourself. Okay? That's what God's got to take you down a notch or two. You'll see them attack people on a personal level. How many times do we see people on YouTube uh, attack people on a personal level? Okay. They get such bitterness in their heart, it reflects with their voice, the words they use. They're not doing discussions. The last video I just showed you guys, I was having an honest discussion with a man, and I, I think he's a brother, brother in Christ, but I can't just say flat out he is because it's the first time I've talked to him, I think. And you have people just jumping on there and they just start calling names and everything and it's personal attacks personal attacks try it i mean they called me a name and then they called brother brian a name and he wasn't even part of the conversation and they just come on there and they just call names and names and names and they're purposely trying to elicit a response bitterness will do that bitterness will get into you where you're just wanting to attack people personally on a personal level uh, bitterness in people's heart when they get bitter towards a man, they're going to want to poison anybody against that man. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, what he teaches is wrong. Okay? I disagree with him on the gospel. I disagree with him on the Godhead versus the Trinity. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you can agree to disagree on those things, but it's one thing to say, hey, he's wrong there. He's wrong with the gospel. He's wrong with the, it's the Godhead, not the Trinity. That's okay, but when you start saying stuff like, you know, making names, you know, I'm a Dillingerite, and, you know, so you start calling him personal names, and uh, you start turning people's name like Steve Andersnake, or um, Ed Fakinger, or no, I think it's um, Robert uh, Breaker, oh, Robert Faker, I think they were trying to say, and I apologize, Lord. I'm only using this as an example of people mocking people's names. They're trying to attack people personally. And I'm going to have to let her down. It's getting hot for her, too. Um, they attack people personally. And yes, I am going to rebuke 
Brian in the past, and he still does it a little bit today, because people, I don't worship Brother Brian, okay? They try to attack people on a personal level. They'll use deceit, people with bitterness in their heart. Um, I've seen videos, and I'll be honest with you, I've seen videos where, knock it off please, no. Um, I've seen peop videos where they're calling Brother Brian out at King James Video Ministries, and as I go through and watch it, because I watched one, they're right here, they're right here, they're right, there's times they're right, they are. But the deceit comes in when they try to use those to overthrow things that Brian's right on. It's called deceit. Okay, did Brian, um, not a hypocrite, but did Brian say this and then accidentally say that? And he's saying two different things, you know. And yes, he's being a hypocrite in that area. He slipped up and said it that way. But because he did that, the gospel he teaches is false. No, it isn't. Okay. He lost his temper here and, and this, and he's, and he's wrong. He's 100% wrong for losing his temper. He's 100% wrong when he slips up and does little personal attacks, makes fun of people's names and stuff like that. He's wrong, but they'll take that and use deceit to say, well, he's wrong about everything. Okay, his ministry is just 100% false. Bitterness in your heart can cause you to try to deceive people and deceive yourself. What ministries we know that promotes this? Okay, now we're going to talk, start talking about some ministries just a little bit. Steve Anderson. Okay, the biggest thing with him when it comes to the bitterness in his heart, which is completely evident, is when it comes to verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Um, Steve Anderson, uh, we've replaced the Jews. He has such hatred for the Jews. If all the Jews got killed today, he wouldn't shed a tear. Not in a heartbeat. Uh, all sodomites should be killed. Okay, that man's got a lot of bit bitterness in his heart. Okay, he's deceiving people. He's poisoning people's hearts and their minds. Okay. Edward, I'm sorry, I'm not really sorry, but I know it's going to upset a lot of people, but Edward P.F., his fruit of his ministry, his number one fruit of his ministry is bitterness. That's the number one fruit of his ministry. Okay. Uh, he uses deceit, he poisons people, he promotes people to fight, to attack people personally, um, pulling people away from truth. And, that, and pulling away from people to preach truth. I, I've watched a few of his videos, and yeah, there's some people he attacks that are false. Absolutely. But his whole ministry is based off attacking people, and even personally attacking people. And he promotes his followers, as I'm called as a follower, he promotes his followers to attack people personally. Okay? Just to attack, attack, attack. Okay? What was it? Uh, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they have used deceit. Their poison of ashes is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Okay? That's most of Edward's ministry. And when he does try to teach the Bible, it gets swallowed up by all these videos of him just attacking people, attacking people, attacking people. His ministry is not one that's of God. Okay, it's not. Anybody, even if you hate King James Video Ministries and you have such bitterness in your heart towards a man, Brian, uh, Brian at King James Video Ministries, if you still have the Holy Spirit in you, you'd look at him and say, I want nothing to do with this man. His ministry, the fruits of his ministry are rotten. Just rotten. I want nothing to do with that man. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, Brian... Now we got to hit up Brian, okay? With Brian back in the past, and I, anytime I mention Brian, there's some things he still struggles with. There's things he's come out and he's repented. He's apologized to the brother of uh, brother to the body of Christ. But I'm still using this as an example for bitterness because he had bitterness in his heart. Okay. So Dillinger uh, Brian, and I always mess up his last name sometimes. I apologize, Brian. And once again, I apologize to Robert Breaker and Edward and Steve Anderson in the sense that I was using those as an example. Your name 
is who you're going to have to stand before God at the great white throne judgment if you don't repent and believe in the true gospel, turn from post-trib, turn from that bitterness that's in your heart. It's your name that God's going to call you and say, you step forward. He's not going to mock your name. Okay. And we are not supposed to either. We're not to purposely try to offend people and start fights by making up names for people. So... Um, Brian there for a while was attacking the lost world in the sense that he was getting he was under a lot of attacks and he one of the things is that I've corrected him on and brothers and sisters corrected him on there for a while is he kept addressing the lost world anytime he came across a subject where the lost world was really really pounding him with attacks personal and not just saying, okay, I disagree with you, here's the scriptures, I disagree with this Brian guy, I'm done. No, I'm talking about personal attacks hardcore on him, his family, and his son. And he would turn around and he was supposed to be talking to the brethren, because my video right now is addressed at brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And yes, I did kind of say the same, I did address uh, Robert Breaker, uh, Steve Anderson, and Edward P.F. in the sense that I don't, I'm not using no names like I agree with people taking your name and twisting them to mock you. Okay. But these videos are addressed at saved sinners, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Brian forgot that there for a while. He kept going off on the lost people that are watching, that are watching to look for him to make a mistake and just go off on, make videos and stuff like that. And he kept doing that a lot. Um, in the comments, he'd get into fights with people. Um, not hardcore, because he didn't have a lot of time, but you'd see him make comments here and there. And he came out, and I started doing the same thing. When I, in one of my videos, I talked about how I came across, I spent a year studying uh, the Word of God through ex-Catholics for Christ and through King James Video Ministries. And I kind of said it like... Um, then I came across the comment section. Like, I didn't know it was there. <laughs> and I'm, I'm laughing because I'm like, is this a good thing or a bad thing that I didn't know it was there? Or is it a good thing or bad thing that I found it? Um, so I kind of got swallowed up in a lot of arguments. And God pricked my heart and said, you know what? If you know the person's lost, you've talked with them, you've tried preaching truth to them, and you know the person's lost, just preach the gospel to them. Don't get into arguments with people. You know they're lost, preach the gospel to them. It's pointless to talk the to preach about the Bible with a lost person if it's other than the gospel. It's pointless. They're not going to get it. They're not going to understand. So, he started addressing the lost world and getting mad at them. These people that are attacking him people that are turning their back on him, the bitterness was a seed and it was growing and it was reflecting itself. Mm -hmm. Don't let that bitterness get the better of you. Mm -hmm. We're going to stay there though, uh, 15, uh, we're going to go to 16, but don't let that bitterness get the better of you. Don't fall into the trap of attacking people personally, making fun of people. Um, true love for somebody is to preach the gospel to them. The Bible says, and I might end up quoting this again, that we are to live peaceably with all men. Okay. You just, it's a struggle. It's a fleshly thing. The bitterness that starts in your heart is a fleshly thing, and it's a struggle that people have with the flesh. I do too. But what is the cost of bitterness? Okay, you get bitter. This is the cost of bitterness. Verse 16, destruction and misery are in their ways. Destruction and misery. Verse 17, And the way of peace have they not known. They'll lose their peace. They won't have peace. Number 18, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Oh my gosh. Right there, brothers and sisters of Christ, you can see that in, in these false Christians that are attacking us. You can see this in Christians that have fallen away. And you can see this in your own life. Okay? Things that just seem like they're falling apart and everything. You can't hold bitterness in your in your heart. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Um, you get to where you're just so 
have such bitterness and you're attacking everybody and you're negative all the time and you're putting yourself down and you're going to have misery and your life is just going to fall apart. Destruction. Uh, you're not going to have peace in your life. I mean, listen to the comments that a lot of people make, whether they be, pe be people, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, that follow King James Video Ministries. Look at some of their comments, and you look at the people that follow Edward P.F., uh, that follow Robert Breaker, and here's the key. This is what you're supposed to be following, not a man. But you got these people that will follow these guys, and... They don't know peace. Look at the conversation. How they're attacking, uh, how they attack. I attack the false teachings. And I show love for the man by preaching the gospel to him and letting him know truth. That's true love. Preaching truth to him and preaching the gospel to him. I do not hate the man, Robert Breaker. I do not hate the man, Edward P.F. And although it's very hard, I do not hate the man, uh, Steve Anderson, okay? They need to get saved. They need Jesus Christ. But Brian, you could tell that he was starting to lose peace. When he would do study videos, he would start to get angry. He, and that people used to say, it's righteous anger, it's right, righteous anger, it's okay. And I was one of those people, it's righteous anger. But when this whole situation of bitterness God showed me in my um, daily devotions, that... I don't believe it was righteous anger, okay? Righteous anger is when you say, hey, the Godhead is the true Jesus Christ, and you Trinitarians out there, you're attacking my God. When you say Trinity, when you say God in three persons, when you say God, capital G, God the Father, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit, you're attacking my God, saying it's the God of the Bible when it's not. Getting angry at something like that is righteous anger. Okay. Getting angry at people that are attacking you personally, attacking your family personally, and you're using words that are mocking them, and you're not... I did a video where when people are attacking you personally, attacking you for standing for the Word of God, your attitude is not to be angry. There's something wrong if you get angry, 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 and that's all you do. You need to be falling on your knees and praising the Lord to be counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ of the Godhead, uh, the true gospel of the King James Bible, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, all these stands you make, you need to feel, thank God to be counted worthy to suffer for them. But it wasn't righteous anger sometimes. It was bitterness, anger that comes from bitterness. Mm -hmm. So I am only pointing that out. Brother Brian has repented. He came out and did a great video on Patreon uh, about his bitterness and a, a great teaching on bitterness and how it can destroy you. And we'll get to this. Uh, we're talking about it now. Um, that it can destroy you, destruction. Uh, you can be in, you'll be in such misery when you let bitterness control you and just overtake your heart. Uh, you won't have peace in your life. And number 18, let's see... Uh, Steve Anderson doesn't have any fear of God. The way he attacks the Jewish people, he has no fear whatsoever of God. He's got such bitterness in his heart that there's no fear of God. Okay? Edward P.F., his whole ministry is not about peace. It's not. It's about riling the flesh up. Okay? And he has no fear of God. He doesn't. You show them scripture after scripture saying, hey, here's the true gospel, okay? This is the true Godhead. Um, there's no fear of God. But God says you're to leave, live peaceably among all, among all men. If, it's, if it be possible, live peaceably among all men. He has no fear of God whatsoever. Brian, like, and I, I talked about Brian, he, um, he didn't have peace, okay? It's almost like he was, you could tell he was kind of miserable a little bit. And he was, and he, like I said, he came out, but I'm using these as examples. I can learn from mistakes that other brothers and sisters in Christ or lost people have made. I can learn from their mistakes. They can come by, like Brian did, testifying about his bitterness that was in his heart. Okay. That's the cost of bitterness. 
bitterness, and we'll get down to the very end, we'll talk about what bitterness can really do to your life. But now we're going to go to Ephesians 4 real quick. So if you turn to Ephesians 4 with me. 